is a simple simulator I developed for simulating the weather each day in Cambridge. My code is a simple automaton with probabilistic transitions. Each day, it picks the next day's weather randomly by picking one of the outgoing edges according to the probabilities written on this diagram. For example, if today was drizzle, then tomorrow is either grey with probability 0.7 or rain with probability 0.3. In code, it's very simple. I first set up a matrix of transition probabilities, call it P, then every day I just pick the next state randomly by looking up the appropriate row of the P matrix. This code uses Python's yield syntax, which is how we generate an infinite lazy list. A model like this is called a Markov chain. The essential feature of a Markov chain is that each value in the sequence is generated based only on the preceding value. Let's bring in some notation. Let x0, x1, x2, dot, dot, dot be a sequence of random variables, xn the weather on day n. In causal diagram notation, each xn is generated based only on x n minus 1. This is the defining feature of Markov chains, and it's called memorylessness. It's called that because once we know the value of xn, then the entire preceding history is completely irrelevant for the future of the process. Think of all of you undergraduate students in Cambridge. You got into Cambridge and that's your current state. You may have been top of your class at school or bottom, but that's all irre irrelevant now. For going forwards, all that matters is where you are now, Cambridge undergraduates. Well, OK, maybe that's not so true about life chances. Maybe some of the past does come in to affect your future. But for systems where memorylessness is a good approximation, there are lots of tools we can use, lots of methods we can apply to deduce all sorts of things, as we'll see in later videos. There are lots and lots of systems like this, lots and lots of systems which can be modelled with memorylessness. And in fact, even in problems where it looks like we should keep some memory around, there may be ways to write out the model so that it is memoryless, as we'll see in a moment. First, some definitions. A Markov chain is an infinite sequence x0, x1, dot, 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 generated according to a linear causal diagram, i.e. generated memorylessly. There are also some restrictions we'll usually make. We'll assume that each xn is a discrete random variable, and the set of allowed values is called the state space of the Markov chain. In my Cambridge weather simulator, the state space is a set of three elements, rain, drizzle, and gray. This diagram I've drawn here is called the state space diagram. Don't get muddled up between the causal diagram and the state space diagram. The causal diagram shows all the random variables, and for Markov chains, it's always the simple straight line. The state space diagram shows all the states and the transitions between them. In other words, the state space diagram is telling us the probability model behind each edge of the causal diagram. We'll assume that at every time step, the rule for generating the next value is exactly the same, and it's a random choice controlled by this matrix P called the transition matrix. Now, all of these assumptions here can be relaxed. We might allow the state space to be real numbers, for example, like latitude and longitude locations. We might allow the transition probabilities to vary with time. We might even allow time to be continuous, not discrete time steps. All of these things are doable, but for the purposes of the next few videos, we're going to make these simplifying assumptions. OK, so that's the Markov chain. The absolutely essential feature of a Markov chain is memorylessness. But what do we do if the system we want to model really does need memory? Here's an example. This example is due to a Russian mathematician called Andrei Markov, who lived from 1856 to 1922. As you might suspect from the name, Andrei Markov invented Markov chains. His first use of them was to model text, specifically the text of Pushkin's poem Evgeny Anyagin. Here's the model he proposed but this being Cambridge, I'll use it for Shakespeare instead of Pushkin. 
First, let's get all our text as a string. Next, I'll scan through the entire text character by character and for every pair of characters I come across, I'll keep a counter of what character followed that pair and how many times it occurred. I'll store all of this in a dictionary of dictionaries called NextChar Count. A list of three successive characters like this is called a trigram. Next, using these counts, I'm going to define a random next character function. This function takes in a pair of characters, then it looks at next char count, and it picks a random character to follow them based on the frequencies in the text. Finally, to generate text, I'll seed it with two characters, for example, O and N. I'm thinking of once upon a time, a good way as any to start a story. And then I repeatedly generate new characters by taking the last two that I generated and randomly synthesizing a new one. Here's what it produced. Not so impressive. But if we used a larger window, let's say five grams instead of trigrams, we're beginning to see something that's a bit more like actual text. Okay, let's think about this as a probability model. The reason we're looking at Markov's model here is to think about Markov chains and the memoryless property. But when we try to write out the causal diagram, we get a complete mess. We started with x0 and x1, based on those two the code generated x2, based on x1 and x2 it generated x3, and so on. This is not a Markov chain. Markov chains have to be linear causal diagrams, each value generated using only the one that came immediately before. So what gives? Here's the answer. We just need to look at the sequence slightly differently. Let me define yn to be the pair xn, xn plus 1. In other words, the sequence of y's is a sliding window of length 2 sliding across the x sequence. The thing about this is that xn plus 2 is generated based on the pair xn, xn plus 1, which means that we can write yn plus 1 as generated from yn. Here's code to generate the y sequence. The key thing to note is that the next y value is generated based only on the previous one. Finally, last line of code, I can undo the bookkeeping. The y list represents a sliding window over the x list. So to get the x list from y, I just pick out the first item of each. The point of defining y in this way is that what we've got is a Markov chain. There are all sorts of useful tools and theorems about Markov chains, so any time we can coerce our probability model into Markov chain format, there are all sorts of results we get for free. In fact, the recurrent neural network from the last video, that one, the one that generated plausible looking Shakespearean text, is just another Markov chain. In this example here of trigram-based text generation, we used a very simple sliding window trick and this is a crude way to encapsulate memory into the state space. For recurrent neural networks, we'll train a neural network to learn a function for summarizing the memory, and this turns out to give surprisingly good results. Let me finish with one more example. Here's a funny little website. It's a guessing game. You have to press left and right as randomly as you can, and there's a gambling setup which rewards you if you press randomly, and which takes money away if you behave predictably. I'll give you a moment to read how it works. Formally, if my guesses are completely random, then my bank balance will follow a random walk with an upward drift of five cents per click. So here's my attempt at behaving randomly. I'm utterly predictable. The website explains how it makes its guesses about what key I'll press. It's just five grams, just like Markov's model. We could ask all sorts of questions about this. Let's suppose my behavior is pretty well modeled by five gram frequencies, maybe with some small variations. Then how much money would I expect to lose? In the next video, we'll look at the maths of how to do calculations on Markov chains.